Hello YouTube, my name is your old TV Sword Call of Duty World War 2. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So in yesterday's video, I discussed how right now we are currently on pace to fail the new Call of Duty World War 2 community challenge. This would be a first for the Call of Duty franchise, and it would look terrible for Activision and Sledgehammer if we were to fail their challenge and mainstream media were to catch wind of that, which is why I said there was a lot that they could be doing to save this game and to make people want to play it a lot more. So today I thought I would sit down and share some of my ideas. I'm going to do my best to try and get through them as fast as humanly possible on the off chance that somebody at Sledgehammer happens to catch this video, but chances are it's going to be a much longer video than normal because I have a lot of ideas that I think would drastically help the game not only right now, but in the months and possibly years ahead. Let's start things off here by taking a look at Master Prestige Rewards. This is a big point of contention in the community, and quite honestly, it baffles me that after 8 months, all we've received is 100 more armory credits via our payroll. Master Prestige players are your most hardcore and dedicated fans. In a lot of ways, they are the bread and butter of the Call of Duty franchise. These are the people who are likely going to be buying all the map packs, they likely bought the season pass, they likely will be dropping money on supply drops, they put a lot more time and effort into the game than an average fan, and they should be rewarded for investing so much time and effort into the game. That's why I have five Master Prestige reward ideas that I think everybody would be happy with. The first one is kind of a smaller one is to increase the payroll yet again to 400 armory credits. Like I said, it's a rather small change, but when you tell people that Master Prestiges get twice the amount of payroll as a non-Master Prestige, that's going to incentivize a lot of people to want to actually get to Master Prestige, and also helps them out a little bit. So let's say hypothetically, there is somebody right now that signs in twice a day, five days a week as a Master Prestige. That means they will get 3,000 armory credits per week from their payroll, but with this change, they will get an extra 1,000 credits per week, which is a little bit better than what they had previously. So that's my first suggestion. Increase the payroll yet again to incentivize more people to want to become Master Prestiges. My second suggestion is to give Master Prestige players a discount over at the Quartermaster. I'm not sure exactly what would be fair. Maybe 10%, 20%, 25% cheaper collection items that would really incentivize a lot of people to want to become Master Prestiges if they know they can get a lot of things a lot cheaper over at the Quartermaster and the extra payroll would definitely help out with that quite a bit. My third suggestion is to give Master Prestige players the ability to complete collections from events that have already ended. I'm hesitant to call this a Master Prestige reward because I kind of want everybody to have this, but if Sledgehammer is set on making that content timed exclusive, I think it would be nice to let Master Prestige players complete collections and earn weapons and content that they may have missed from previous events. My fourth suggestion is to give supply drops to Master Prestige players for crying out loud why is this not a thing? For those that don't know, while leveling up normally, you get a free supply drop every five levels here in Call of Duty World War II, but for some reason, once you hit Master Prestige, that goes away. My suggestion is to give Master Prestige players a supply drop every five levels just like it was before, and maybe give them a bundle of 10 supply drops every time they hit a 100 in their level, so Master Prestige 100, 200, 300, and so on. Of course, I do think they should also retroactively give back the supply drops that we missed out on all this time. So, for example, I'm a Master Prestige level 300, and that means I've missed out on 50 supply drops, give or take, from leveling up since I've hit Prestige Master. I think the reason why Sledgehammer isn't actually doing this is because they're afraid to give out so many supply drops, right? If they were to actually implement this, they would be giving out a metric ton of supply drops to Master Prestiges of all levels, but I honestly think that's something that needs to be done. They should be getting the supply drops that we should have been earning all this time here in Call of the World War II, and my fifth and final suggestion for Master Prestige rewards would be to give Master Prestiges heroic tokens that can be used to instantly unlock heroic weapons, uniforms, calling cards, weapon charms, or whatever the player wants. The idea is actually very similar to what Sledgehammer did back in Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, which was a great system, and my idea is to do something similar here in Call of Duty World War II, but instead just give us these heroic tokens once we hit Master Prestige. So, 
As soon as you hit Master Prestige, you get a Heroic Token that you can use. Then you get another one once you hit Master Prestige level 100, and then you get another token every 50 levels until you hit Master Prestige level 1000. That may seem like a lot of tokens, but it really isn't, because I quickly went through and counted all the Heroic Weapon variants that are currently available in the game, and right now there are 127 different Heroic Weapon variants here in Call of Duty World War 2, with a lot more coming down the pipeline, with more community events, and more DLCs before Black Ops 4 comes out, right? So, at most, this system would give Master Prestige players 20 heroic tokens that they could use to pick and choose wherever they want in the game. They only have 20 at most at Master Prestige level 1000, and they could use these to unlock DLC weapons that maybe they haven't gotten yet, or maybe a heroic weapon variant that they've won for a long time, or maybe a uniform, or a calling card, or wherever it is they're after. I think it would be a great incentive for people to actually hit Master Prestige. There are plenty of other things I could talk about, like the fact that there's currently no event whatsoever for hitting Master Prestige. Basically, you just roll over from 10th Prestige into Master Prestige with no event whatsoever in the headquarters. But regardless of that, I think if Sledgehammer were to implement all these ideas, it would not only bring Master Prestige players back to the game, but it would keep them playing the game with a steady stream of rewards, and it would also incentivize other players to continue playing the game so they themselves could hit Master Prestige. And speaking of incentive to play, my next suggestion here involves DLC weapons. This has been a highly debated topic and it's been talked about to death over the course of the past couple of months, but I think I have a solution that would make pretty much everybody happy. Maybe not so much Activision and Sledgehammer, but at least hear me out on this one. My idea is for DLC weapon contracts to return to the daily system with three different contracts rotating in on a daily basis. Like every single day you go to the Quartermaster and there will be three different weapon contracts that are available to you. The best part about this is right now you can have up to three contracts active at one time, which means that you could have three weapon contracts all cooking at once, and to compensate for that, Sledgehammer can make it so the contracts are a bit more difficult by requiring, I don't know, maybe 100 wins or 150 matches or something like that. It would allow fans to get the content that they actually want to get, while at the same time, it would encourage fans to actually play the game a bunch more than they are currently. The only people I see who are in favor of the current system right now are the people who play the game pretty much religiously. And don't get me wrong, I'm right there with you guys. I have every single TLC weapon in this game. I've been a Master Prestige for a while. I've maxed out my social score. I have Chrome Camo. Like, I play this game a ton as well. But we have to think about the players who don't play as much as we do. We have to think about the non-Master Prestiges, the non-players with like 15 days of playtime, the people that don't play this game all the time, right? I said earlier that Master Prestiges are a pretty big deal, and they are. They are your most hardcore fans. But I can promise you guys there are many more people out there who are like 5th Prestige or below than they are Master Prestige or higher, right? It's just that's the very nature of things. We have to think about those fans as well. And as of right now, all the DLC weapons are insanely expensive to acquire, and these numbers may be slightly off. But last I checked, I think that 10 of the 23 DLC weapons in this game can't even be obtained at the Quartermaster anymore because they're tied to events that have already ended. So a lot of the stuff is very difficult to get. I understand that the system does heavily reward people who play the game all the time, but it doesn't reward everybody. And I I think for Call of Duty to compete with all the other games out there, they need to start rewarding more people more frequently, which is why I suggest this new system. I think it would be the most consumer-friendly business model that we've ever seen in Call of Duty, while at the same time, it would also incentivize people to play the game a ton by requiring a lot of matches played to unlock the content. I think it's a win-win for pretty much everybody involved. Next up, moving away from Master Prestige and DLC and supply drops and stuff like that, I think we should discuss score streaks. I think that score streaks here in Call of Duty World War II should receive a buff to become more lethal. And I know some people disagree with that. My cousin, for example, he prefers matches where literally no score streaks get called in whatsoever for some reason. I'm really not sure why. But when I look back at some other games in the Call of Duty series, like Modern Warfare 2 or the original Black Ops or Modern Warfare 3 or Black Ops 2, which by the way, that was the Call of Duty heyday, each of those games had insanely powerful and rewarding kill streaks. Earning those streaks was one of the key reward systems in the game that kept people around, that kept people playing and it kept people trying to improve like I can speak from experience I was really 
really bad when I first started playing back in Call of Duty 4. I started getting a little bit better in World at War. Then when Modern Warfare 2 came out and suddenly we had AC-130s and chopper gunners and tactical nukes and stuff like that, that really lit a fire under me to try to become the best player I could. Like beforehand, all I played was like Search and Destroy and Hardcore Search and Destroy. But when I saw all those really cool kill streaks, I wanted to acquire them and that turned me in to the player that I am today, which I'm not the greatest player ever, but I'm definitely above average, right? So I feel as though if you want to have the same thing happen to a new generation of Call of Duty fans, we have to have good kill streaks in the game, and it starts here with Call of Duty World War II. My suggestion is to buff most of the lethal score streaks to be as powerful as they are with the Blitzkrieg buff by default, and they can take the Blitzkrieg basic training and buff up those streaks even higher, but don't go too crazy with it, obviously. I mean, I don't want to have crazy overpowered kill streaks or anything like that. I do think that non-lethal streaks, like the recon aircraft, the counter recon aircraft, the care package, and the flat guns should be left the way they are, and I also think that the Molotov cocktails should stay at one charge instead of two, but by and large, all the other streaks should probably receive a little bit of a buff, and the reason why I came to this conclusion is not only do I rarely see streaks outside of requisitions in my games, but also just looking at my own stats, I mean, the high streaks are typically worth a couple of kills, but not nearly as much as they were back in the Modern Warfare 2 slash Black Ops 1 days, and then the lower streaks, like the glide bomb, the artillery, the mortar strike, like they're all really weak, they're worth maybe one kill, if that, and keep in mind, a lot of these have been buffed up by me playing in shipments where they're guaranteed a couple of kills, right? Like, in an average map, the glide bomb is barely worth a kill. The artillery is just, like, it just bombards part of the map and shakes your screen, doesn't really do anything else. I feel so buffing them up would make Call of Duty World War II a much better game. It would actually make it more interesting. Though, as compensation for all this, I still do think, and I hate to beat the dead horse here, but I still do think that requisitions needs to be removed from the game entirely. I understand that it was nerfed, and I understand that it's not as big of a deal now as it was back then, but it's still a pretty big issue here in Call of Duty World War II. I mean, just last night, here's a game, and it was on shipment, but here's a game last night where I was playing pretty well, but we got blown out because they were all running requisitions. And here is the very next match. I backed out, and they threw me back into the same lobby where I had to face the same people still using requisitions, and we barely won because they were using requisitions. There's no counter to requisitions whatsoever besides you going off all the time and getting like three or four sets of flat guns, it's pretty difficult to do that as a solo player, and it's all because of that one crutch basic training. I understand that some people like it, I understand that some people like the idea of requisitions, but I really hate it, a lot of other YouTubers really hate it, and we've talked about this all countless times before, so I won't reiterate it too much here, but suffice it to say, I personally think that requisitions still needs to go. Last but not least, I think I have a solution to the chrome camo situation. I know that some people are really going to hate this idea, but at least hear me out on this. I think that Chrome should be replaced with a burnt orange version, or whatever color you want, version of the original animated zombies camo. This would be similar to Dark Matter from Black Ops 3, and I think it would actually be noticeable, and it would actually be something worth going for in the Call of Duty World War II multiplayer. Now, like I said, I understand that a lot of you guys hate the idea of an animated camo in a World War II game, and eight months ago, I was right there with you guys, but I think at this point, there's no reason why we can't have just one animated camo in the game for completing every weapon challenge with every base weapon. Just look at what they've done to the game recently. I mean, we have unicorn reticles. We have people making rainbow camos over at the paint shop. We have dinosaurs hanging off the sides of our guns. We can turn our weapons bright yellow, bright orange, candy apple red, orange tiger. There's a freaking disco ball camo now for crying out loud. I don't think there's any reason why we should draw the line at one animated camo for the hardest challenge in the entire game. Like, I don't think it's going to ruin anyone's immersion, more so than what they've already done with everything over at the Quartermaster. Like, I feel as though the game stopped being historically accurate back in January, and while, yes, I still want them to keep things in check, but I really do think that Chrome is a terrible endgame reward, especially considering that a better Chrome is now available in supply drops, I think that a Dark Matter-style animated camo with a World War II twist would be a much better endgame reward, especially if Sledgehammer actually keeps things in check and keeps it as the only animated camo in the Call of Duty World War II multiplayer. The last thing I would want them to do is add that as the final chrome camo, then suddenly add a bunch of other animated camos to supply drops. I'm asking for this to be the only animated camo in the game. I think that would be an awesome end game reward. And not to mention, if they were to do this, suddenly people would actually try to complete challenges again, weapon variety would be back on the rise, and people would actually be incentivized to play the game more, especially if they were to implement all the other ideas that I discussed 
discussed here in today's video. Now, obviously, there's a lot more I could potentially discuss. There's a lot more they could be adding to the game, but I really feel as though all these ideas could go a long way into revitalizing Call of Duty World War II and making it better for months and maybe even years to come. I discussed it briefly in yesterday's video, but I really do think it's important that they continue working on this game because we have no idea how Black Ops 4 is going to turn out. It could be an awesome experience that everybody enjoys, or it could fall flat on its face with all the changes that Treyarch is going to be making to the Call of Duty formula. Like, I understand that it sounds dramatic, but this game right here, Call of Duty World War II, is likely going to be the last World War II themed game in the series for a very long time. And it's also going to be the last traditional Call of Duty game, at least for the foreseeable future. I mean, just look at what's happened as of recently. We had Advanced Warfare, Black Ops 3, and Infinite Warfare before this one. And after this one, we're getting Black Ops 4, which is going to have a heavy focus on specialists, specialist abilities, player healing, 5v5 combat, and a bunch of other things. If you're comparing new releases to the older Call of Duty games, World War II is the only Call of Duty in the past five years and for the foreseeable future that is even remotely like the good old days of Modern Warfare 2 and Black Ops 1 and Modern Warfare 3 and Call of Duty 4 and stuff like that. Now, of course, we do have Modern Warfare 2 Remastered and other remasters coming down the pipeline, I'm sure, but in terms of new releases and new content, this is the only old school COD that we have for right now, which is why I'm so passionate that they continue working on this game and making it better for fans in general. Like, I understand that this game is not everybody's cup of tea. That is very clear. The player count is pretty low this year compared to previous years, but there are still millions of us who really enjoy this style of game, and that's why I wanted to make this video. I would love to hear down there in the comment section below, what do you personally think that Sledgehammer should do to make this game even better for right now and for the foreseeable future? And keep in mind that tomorrow is Friday, therefore we will be getting a brand new community update. Now this is actually quite interesting. While I was recording this video, Sledgehammer Games put out a new tweet that says that starting tomorrow, they are going to begin a new weekly live stream series that will accompany their community updates. They also mentioned that tomorrow they're going to discuss Master Prestige rewards, so that seems like a good sign of things to come, but of course time will tell. Ladies and gentlemen, I will keep you guys up to date with more information as it becomes available, but for right now, that's all I have for you guys here today. Thank you all so much for listening, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.